practical applications of algebraic expressions using formulas. Now let's try seven more examples using formulas. Example 8 has the circumference of a circle. Circumference is a fancy word for perimeter of a circle or the distance around. To find circumference, we multiply pi times the diameter. Pi is equal to 3.14. The diameter is 5 inches. Notice the diameter goes all the way across the circle. Our solution is to then multiply pi times the diameter, or 3.14 times 5. We get 15.7, and our answer then would be 15.7 inches. The volume of a rectangular solid, okay, it's three-dimensional, so it's solid. It has a rectangular base, so we call it a rectangular solid. The volume is length times width times height. The length is 5 feet, the width is 3 feet, and the height is 4 feet. So I'm going to multiply length times width times height. Substituting these numbers in, 5 times 3 times 4, I get 60. And just like before when we did volume, since it's a three-dimensional object, we get cubic feet. So the answer is 60 cubic feet. Our cube, volume of a cube, is a rectangular solid with all the sides the exact same length. So we can say the volume equals side cubed. And in this case, the side is 5 inches. So the volume is 5 times 5 times 5, which equals 125. The volume is 125 cubic feet. When we get to the cylinder, which looks like a can, to find the volume, we have to do pi r squared h. This means pi times the radius squared, this radius here, times the height. Our values, pi is 3.14, the radius is 5 inches, and the height is 10 inches. So to substitute in, I would have to do 3.14 for pi, radius squared, the radius is 5, 5 times 5 is 5 squared, and the height is 10. When I multiply 3.14 times 5 times 5 times 10, I get 785. It's a three-dimensional object, so it's 785 cubic inches. Let's try a simple interest problem. You remember that formula as interest equals principal times rate times time. We need to find the interest on a $5,000 bank loan at 12% for six months. The principal is $5,000. The rate is 12%. The time is six months, which is one half or 0.5 years. That's why we use 0.5. 5,000 times 12% times 0.5 equals 300. Remember, we're speaking about money, so we label our answer $300. Distance is another formula we could use. We have the jet averaged 550 miles per hour for four and a half hours. How far did the jet travel? The formula for distance is rate times time. Rate being how fast you're traveling, time being how long you're traveling. The solution then the rate was 550 miles per hour. The time we traveled for four and a half hours. Four and a half is the same as 4.5. So 550 times four and a half is 2,475. Since we're talking about distance in miles, our answer is 2,475 miles. And last but not least, total cost. The carpenter bought 36 hinges at $1.39 each. What was the total cost? Our formula for cost is N times R, where N is the number of units, how many you bought, and R is the cost or rate per unit, how much it cost. So we need N times R, 36 hinges times $1.39, gives us $50.04. 
and we have to make sure we label our answer with the dollar sign. So when you use formulas, make sure you substitute the right number in for the right variable and then do your mathematics correctly. This is a car show in Houston, Texas. What you see is a Chevy Camaro with a 350 cubic inch engine. This is one of the first 350 engines built. How do automotive engineers figure cubic inches for an engine? Let's find out. First of all, a 350 cubic inch engine, the bore is four inches. That's the diameter of the cylinder that we have shown up here. The stroke is 3.48 inches, and that means this piston goes up and down in this bore, and the number of cylinders is eight cylinders. But before we go and do the math, I'd like to explain a little bit how a four-cycle engine works. And first of all, in some engines you have a carburetor or you have a fuel injector, and what that does, it mixes the air and the fuel together, and here is your intake valve, which is controlled by the camshaft. And so this opens up and the suction of the piston coming down sucks in fuel and air and that's the intake stroke. Then the valve closes and you have a compression stroke. Electricity goes to the spark plug, ignites this fuel mixture and there's an internal explosion. The hot gases inside forces the piston down. That's where the engine gets the power. That's the power stroke. Then it has to get rid of those fumes inside the combustion chamber. Then the exhaust valve opens up, pushes out the exhaust gases out through the exhaust manifold and out through the tailpipe. And then it starts over again. Intake, compression, power, exhaust. Intake, compression, power, exhaust. And this piston has rings on it, which prevents the oil from going up into the combustion chamber from the gases escaping into the crankcase over here. And this piston comes, goes up and down straight, and this, can, this shaft over here, the crankshaft, changes the up and down motion to a rotary motion. And that's how the four-cycle engine works. Now let's find out how do they get 350 cubic inch engine out of this engine. So the bore is four inches, and remember, volume equals pi times radius squared times the height. Now the, this is the bore is four inches, it's the diameter. So the radius equals two inches. So let's put in the information. Pi is 3.14 times the radius, 2, it's square again, times the height, which is the stroke, is 3.48. Now let's do the math on that. 3.14 times 2 times 2 times 3.48 equals now there's one other thing that they do here. They also multiply by eight because there's eight cylinders. It's not just, that's one cylinder. So the 350 engine has eight cylinders, so we multiply that by eight times eight. And there you can see it's 349.6, and I should really erase this equal, times eight equals 350 cubic inches. And so now you see how they get that again. Remember, it's using this formula and multiplying the radius and the stroke and the cylinders by pi, and that's how they get the 350 cubic inch engine. And that only measures now is the stroke and the bore. That's how they measure engines. Please pause the video now and complete the problems in your workbook. When finished, press play and we'll continue with the next lesson.